Welcome back everyone. This is episode 86 of Quest for You. And I have something special for you today. I just finished reading a wonderful book that I decided to share with you over the next two episodes. It's called The Art of War by Stephen Pressfield. And it's an amazing read that I recommend to everyone and soon you will find out why. You see, the thing is this. It doesn't matter what you're trying to become better at. If you only do the work when you're motivated, then you'll never be consistent enough to become really good at it. Even if you have identified your dream and your purpose, if you don't start it, then it will remain a dream. If you just begin a bunch of things and never finish any of them, how will you discover your true potential? The ability to show up every day, to stick to a schedule and to do your work, especially when you don't feel like it. That is the theme of Pressfield's book. And he calls it resistance. And I'm going to review part one of this wonderful book today by reading you a few snippets and then adding some of my own thoughts. And I really hope you enjoy this. So let's roll. Quote, Resistance cannot be seen, touched, heard, or smelled, but it can be felt. This is a feeling that we all experience at some point in our lives. The kind of resistance Pressfield talks about in this book is the one that prevents us from getting our work done. And the kind of work that he's referring to is something that he spells out right at the beginning of the book. And in my copy, it is on page 5. There are... There are 11 types of work that he spells out that this could apply to, and I'm sure there are many more, but for example, any diet or health regimen, any activity whose aim is tighter abdominals, I love this, he's actually also quite funny, and education of every kind. And then let's, let's see what else. The undertaking of any enterprise or endeavor whose aim it is to help others. His main work is writing. He is a writer, so that is his first point. The pursuit of any calling in writing, painting, music, film, dance, or any creative art, however marginal or unconventional. So this is what he refers to as work, and there's more. I think work is anything. Anything that you undertake with the goal of of becoming good at or being excellent at or excelling and making a difference. Okay, next quote. Resistance arises from within. This is not anything we can blame someone for. It may appear that others are holding us back or that we have too much to do or that the conditions aren't right, but really... Those are not the real source of resistance. Resistance, and this is what I like about this book, is makes it very clear. Resistance is of our own making. It comes from the inside. We are creating the conditions for resistance, both in our mind and in our environment. Next quote. Resistance will tell you anything to keep you from doing your work. And to me, those are the excuses you make. The reasons you deem convincing for why you cannot do something. The stories you tell yourself. And it shows up in how you prioritize. Suddenly, cleaning the house becomes more important, knowing you still have the project to finish today. Next quote. The more important a call or action is to our soul's evolution, the more resistance we will feel toward pursuing it. And that is why dreams are so hard to realize. That's why we avoid risky situations and stay within our comfort zone. The more we step outside of it, and the closer we get to risk, the louder resistance screams. I'm sure everyone listening can relate to this. Next quote. Resistance has no strength of its own. We feed it with power by our fear of it. That means we are responsible for it. We create it. And we recreate it anew every day. Fear, lies, perception. 
whatever you want to call it, but we make the monster within ourselves. We exaggerate, we overthink, we make things bigger than they really are. We invent reasons for not doing things. We do it to ourselves. Next quote. Resistance obstructs movement only from a lower sphere to a higher. I really like this one. See, dabbling in the same old stuff that you've been doing all your life, staying within your comfort zone, developing areas that are already, that are already strong areas for you anyways. Doing all this, you will not have to worry about resistance. The higher spheres that Pressfields refers to here are the things that challenge you, that help you grow, that have a higher purpose, that are less conforming and more unique. Basically, everything you ever dreamed of but gave up because it didn't seem smart or rational or lucrative or reasonable. Quote, The danger is greatest when the finish line is in sight. Have you ever noticed that? The closer we get to being done, the more resistance kicks in, telling us that this may not be good enough, that we just really wasted our time. Nobody's going to like this. We are suddenly second-guessing ourselves like never before. We put the entire project, the entire work we just did into question. Just when we're about to turn it in or submit it. Quote, Procrastination is the most common form of manifesting because it's the easiest to rationalize. It's the famous, I'll do it later. It works in college because there's a deadline. But in life, with projects we choose, where there is no real consequence other than not doing it, later may never arrive. We may die before it does. So procrastination is deadly, in my opinion. It's the years that fly by that you later wonder about. Where did they go? What did I do with them? What did I do with my life? Quote, Anything that draws attention to ourselves through pain-free or artificial means is a form of resistance. To me, this is any pleasure-seeking activity that prevents us from doing our work. Gambling, drugs, alcohol, social media, you name it. Pressfield mentions jealousy, chronic lateness, and seeking trouble of any sort. These are the things that draw attention to us and away from our goals. Quote, Depression and anxiety may be real, but they can also be resistance. Some people just always seem to have some kind of health situation. These may be real, I understand, but they are also exasperated when, when you consciously don't take care of yourself. And that is both emotionally and physically. Sometimes these things can become an excuse for not being able to move forward. Next quote. If you find yourself criticizing other people, you're probably doing it out of resistance. The internet is full of criticism. Look at any YouTube video, even the most harmless one you can think of, and there will be some negative comment underneath. People, I know, not you, but some people, criticize because they don't get their act together and produce something of their own. So they belittle others. It feels good, I get it. They think they are smarter and could do much better than the other person. But first, they should do. Then they can talk. So please, don't be one of those people. Don't criticize. It's easy, but it's a distraction away from what you should be doing. Quote, Resistance is directly proportional to love. I love this, and it speaks for itself. The more you want to do something, the more opposition you may face from yourself. Quote, Resistance loves healing. Pressfield places healing in quotation marks. And what he means here is what I also have spoken about before. We feel we need to be well and healed before we can start. So we go to one retreat and workshop after another, hoping for just a few more insights and some enlightenment. When really, all we need to do is start. I believe there is so much healing in the act of doing something you love. But without ever starting it, you won't know what I'm talking about. So I want to end here. This was a snapshot from the first part of the book with some highlights. If you are struggling to get started with something, I strongly encourage you to pick up a copy. 
In tomorrow's episode, I will give you some highlights from the second part, and that is on how to combat resistance. So, to leave you with some ending thoughts, I want you to not give up. Sometimes the timing is just not right, resistance or not. Just keep trying. Pursuing the best version of yourself is your single most important task in life. Stick with it and do what you can. But keep your goals and plans on your mind, even if you cannot start them right now. The body only quits something when the brain commands it to stop working. I heard this the other day. The body only quits something when the brain commands it to stop working. Know what you're capable of and always push yourself towards greatness, not mediocrity. Remember there's always something you can do. And lastly, face your fears and challenges. Don't ask why. Change your question from why to why not. And this may change your entire perspective. I want to thank you for joining me today. And please stay in touch. You can follow me on Twitter. Maybe even send me a note. I would love that. And with that, much love for today. And I'll speak to you tomorrow.